for Christ with all you've got. Part of the fun of sports in debating who is the greatest. There is no way to subjectively measure such a concept, but in sheer influence and success, many would agree that John Wooden was the greatest coach of any sport ever. He won 10 NCAA Basketball National Championships, including a span of seven consecutive titles. That's the all-time record and with the revolving door of collegiate athletic sports where entire teams are replaced every few years, it was an astounding feat. As a Christian, Wooden always rightly gave thanks to the Lord for his success, but make no mistake, he was a fervent believer in the power of hard work and disciple. He drilled his players hard. He demanded their very best. Many of his principles have been studied the world over and applied to businesses and countless other career fields. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize. A science runs to win. Why? Because that's part of our identity. We give Christ everything naturally when we understand who we are in Christ because we know that everything belongs to Him anyway. Without Him, we can do nothing. Through Christ, all things are possible. The key is this. Stop trying to become something you already are. You are made a scient by the loving sacrifice of Christ and the reality of His Holy Spirit in you. If you think you are a sinner, you will need to try to establish your own righteousness. That leads to legalism despair and failure because it simply can't be done. It's not the way we were designed. The design of the Christian life beginning in the upper room of Acts chapter 2 is an intimate, passionate walk in the Holy Spirit where we rest in who we are in Christ and allow him to live his life through us. That's how the race is won in the Christian faith. Heavenly Father, I have been called by your name and you call me a scient. I desire to be one of your champions, yet I openly confess my failures and my shortcomings, both the things that I have done and the things that I have not done. Show me how to run this race. Remind me continually of my inability to live the Christian life. I now stand aside from my own efforts and ask that the power of your spirit in me would live the life that you intend for me to live. You and you alone are the greatest. I surrender my will and my strength to you. I ask that you would use me, shape me in any way that you desire. In the name of your precious and gracious Son, Jesus, Amen, Hallelujah, Amen. Everything you need to live your abundant life. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows 
the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. I am fascinated by the way animals com camouflage themselves in the wild. There's a fish in the Pacific called the mer merlet uh, scorpion sh fish, neat name for sure. Scorpion sh fish blend perfectly into one particular type of coral. You can be st uh, staring at this coral and thinking to yourself, my oh my that's unique and beautiful and you have you would have no idea you were looking at a fish there's an old phrase that may uh, that my daughter loves to use it's hidden in plain sight this refers, of course, to something that is apparently obvious, but the, that people still miss. If you know there's a fish in the uh, photograph of the coral, you are better able to spot it. It is still tricky, but eventually you will see it because you have been uh, tipped of that the fish is there. The Apostle Paul is saying in this verse that the same is true with God. No one knows what's really going on inside God's mind unless he tips us off and reveals it through his word and or his spirit. How does he go about doing that? What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. What we need has already been given to us, the spirit. Everything you need to live your abundant life, you already have. You, he is already given it to you. It may be hidden in plain sight, but you know it's there. The Holy Spirit is the teacher who wants to show it to you. Father in the heaven, teach me to find you. You are in plain sight, and yet I seem to always miss you. Give me the wisdom and discernment by your spirit that I need to understand and apply your purpose for me. I can't do this on my own. I trust in you to reveal the mystery in your time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep these stories coming. We recently received a letter from a listener named Mary that we thought you would want to read because her words are a powerful testimony to the impact of your support. Mary shares, I am tremendously grateful for the inspiring, uplifting call to action, shift in perspective, grace feel gospel messages that are shared by, by Stuart Jill and Pete Berisco. As Christians, we are tasked with navigating being in the world but not of the world, and I truly believe telling the truth is shining God's light in order to better help individuals, including myself, meet this challenge with grace, peace, and renewal, which is only possible through our Lord and Savior. Thank you for your service to God and His disciples. Experience the joy of knowing God's will for you. Jesus teaches us how God has a will and a plan for you, and how the Holy Spirit can empower you 
to find and follow his call. Do you really know him? The only questions that really matter are the ones you ask yourself. There is an anomaly that we need to tackle in church culture. It's the Christian who in principle is focused on Christ but in practice is still focused on themselves. In principle they say all the right things. They look the right way. They carry the right Bible. They go to the right Bible studies etc. In principle they are focused on Christ but in practice it's still about themselves. Sure it all looks Christian but it's not focused on Christ. It's focused on activity, religion and self effort. Sad. So the question must be asked, do you really know Jesus? Some of you have heard over the years that Christ lives in you. You know about that, but you, have you experienced it? Do you know what it looks like? Have you ever truly asked him into your heart? Thanked him for going? To the cross for you praised him because of his mercy and grace I want to particularly aim these questions at those of you who might feel like you know a lot about God Jesus the spirit and his word if you think you have a lot of religious knowledge, you actually might not know anything. The core reason for this is that true Christianity is not adherence to doctrine and devotion. It's a mystery that can only be known in the context of relationship. If you have the Holy Spirit in your spirit and God's word in your hand, all things pertaining to the mystery and all things pertaining to salvation and life in Christ are available to you. You can understand them as the Holy Spirit reveals them to you. As you submit to the Holy Spirit and ask Him to do that, He will be faithful to do it. Do you really know Him? Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going forth is as certain as the dawn, and He will come to you to us like the rain, like the spring rain watering the earth. Heavenly Father God, I want to go beyond knowing you in principle and instead know you personally in close relationship, submitting to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I want to know what it means to be truly free in the most beautiful, powerful, strong, happy name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Living up to what you have attained, God is waiting for a settlement of all of our controversies with Him. The thought of being anything other than British is repulsive to, well, the British. I can say this from experience because I was born in England. So when I became an American citizen, it was likely met with a few raised eyebrows by some of my fellow, fellow Brits. During the citizenship ceremony, I had to raise my right hand and say, paraphrasing, I renounce all allegiances to any foreign sovereigns and powers. Basically, they were asking me to renounce my 
homeland and that was hard for me I had to promise to do that because the United States does not accept dual citizenship that is how it is for all of us in Christ we now have complete allegiance to him when I raised my hand and re-announced my allegiance to Britain I became dead to Britain when I came to Christ I became dead to my old self significantly this death is something that has already happened in Christ it is a mystery for certain but it is done only let us live up to what we have already attained we don't have to work for this. Everything we are was attained by Christ. We are living up to what we have already attained. Britain is still alive and well across the pond. My renounce, uh, renunciation of my allegiance did not cause the queen to step down and dissolve parliament. My, cell, my flesh is still hang around too. I belong to cross, but my flesh still beckons. I am not saying that Britain is the equivalent of sinful flesh. Please don't run, run with that analogy. But there is no dual citizenship. We are all members of Christ's kingdom first and for, uh, foremost. Heavenly Father God, I praise you for calling me your child and Anahaya. Thank you for letting me be a citizen of your kingdom with no higher allegiance. Jesus, teach me how to live up to what I have already attained by your death for me through the power and presence of your spirit in me according to the truths you have recorded and revealed in the scripture i renounce any allegiance to my fleshly desires i pledge allegiance to you and you only my beloved jesus hallelujah amen Offering yourself to Christ alone. Cricket to us was more than play. It was a worship in the summer sun. Sports bring out the crazy in people. No, nowhere else can you have a stadium full of ordinarily rational human beings go from euphoria we sport to soul-crushing heart, uh, heart attack they scored in a matter of seconds sports are a funny manifestation of a deep truth we absolutely crave something to worship to properly properly worship the lord we must make an offering of ourselves it doesn't happen instantly which really irks us in the age of face id and tap to pay we demand things right now if it is not quick and easy we convince ourselves it must not be worth our effort this type of thinking makes it unusually hard to dis discipline our minds and bodies. But that's what God calls us to. Disciplined minds and bodies offered up to Him in the service of worship. We will worship something or someone. It's how we are designed as creatures of worship. It's why we cheer at sports events passionately and also scream in anguish at a loss. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should 
no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. When you become a believer, your spirit becomes alive to God and dead to endeviling sin. So endeviling sin is no longer master over you. You discover this in your mind. As the Holy Spirit enlightens your mind and illuminates the scripture as you study it, you discover truth uh, about who you are, a creation of worship designed to bring glory to God. Knowing this, I mean really knowing it, is what helps us make the decision to offer ourselves as instruments of worship to Christ and not to sin. Lord Jesus, my desire is to become an offering to you and nothing else. Reveal to me the plan you have for me today. I praise you and thank you for freeing me from sin when I was crucified with you. By the power of your spirit, I choose to worship you. Illuminate your word as I read it and give me the patterns of thoughts and action that naturally reflect who you are in me and who I am in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the most powerful, beautiful, wonderful, successful name of you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Freedom over your emotions. Emotions were designed by God to follow and not to lead. We were once on a family horseback ride at a family friend's ranch in East Texas. My son Liam was riding a horse named Easy Money while we were trotting happily along Easy Money decided to uh, he was done and made a beeline back for the stables poor Liam was holding on for dear life but at that moment our guide shouted Liam pull back on the reins. So Liam yanked hard and that 2,000 pound animal stopped on a deer. The horse responded just as our emotions ought to respond. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. In this passage, Paul communicates what a person acts like when they have their emotions under the authority of the spirit. The emotions might feel like a runaway horse, but we control the rain when we don't allow our emotions to dictate our decisions. You could feel incredibly infatuated with someone in a moment, ready to marry them just on sight. But do you sign a contract with someone you met one hour before because you feel like it? Of course not. You do your due diligence before you sign it. Emotions can enhance our lives when properly challenged, channeled, but when they are out of control, they can be very harmful. Believe in your mind what God has promised you in his word and don't let your emotions run rampant like easy money. When those emotions try to take off in their own direction, grab the rein 
of God's truth. You are what God says about you, not what you feel about you. There's a big difference. You are forgiven. The Spirit of Christ lives in you. The Spirit of Christ empowers you to do God's will. You are significant and of supreme value to God and His purposes. Holy Spirit, I claim the power you give me over my emotions. I am what you say about me, not what I feel about myself. I renounce the lies that feel true, and by your power in me, choose to act according to who I am in you. Thank you, my Lord, for the uh, for the forgiveness you have given me, and the freedom I have over my emotions in your name. Ha- Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Getting to know God's will, fixed on His faithfulness. We have no choice but to meet the nightly news with morning. Yet while the state of our world must give us pause, we know that God hasn't left His throne. He has a will. He has a will, and His Spirit is gracious to lead us in it as we earnestly seek Him in the Scriptures. In the message below, in the Bible, you can find the Word of God and pray that His unchanging character would encourage your heart and increase your confidence in His will. Let us hold unsparingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. You are part of something special. God's will for my life is how Bible teaches us on God's plan of prayerful adventure for every believer including you. It helps more people discover God's will and experience the abundant depths of life in Christ. Giving God permission to live through you. Life is pain, your highness. Anyone who says differently is selling you something. I once read through a magazine that was profiling the 50 most influential Christians in the world or something like that. George W. Bush was on the cover. I was curious and flipped through it to see if my parents made their list. I got all the way to number 50 and instead of seeing my father or mother, I saw Dr. Phil. I was incensed at the just injustice of it all. I even went to lunch with a pastor friend and complained about how Dr. Phil was all flesh based in his advice, etc. Then my friend quietly informed me that his dad led Dr. Phil to the Lord almost 30 years ago. Bam! At that moment, I pretty much heard the spirit say to me, Look at the poison coming out of your mouth, Pete. (coughs) That's not who you are. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. Our minds and bodies need renewing, lots of renewing, so much in fact that it takes takes us our entire lives 
no one gets to the point of total perfection while on earth and anyone telling you otherwise is selling you something and yet that needn't be discouraging what a wonderful ta- uh, thought that Christ loves us enough to give us the Holy Spirit to teach and lead us as we grow we are already science perfect and holy in our spirit before God now we need to simply allow God to live up to what we have already attained in Christ in our souls and bodies I know that sounds crazy but it's true God is ready to live through you in a way that is a natural extension of who he has made you to be in Christ will you give him permission to do so of course hallelujah amen Lord God of my strength and salvation I know what my true identity is I am a scient a holy one called out by you for your purposes and my ultimate joy I stand aside now and ask only that you will make that truth come alive in all areas of life I accept the fact that this is a lifelong journey full of moment by moment decisions to renew my mind I bow before you as someone totally dependent on you to make it happen thank you for promising that you will amen hallelujah amen